Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? Thank you so much for coming out tonight to our Kingdom panel here at the SAC Foundation. How did you like? I have to say, I don't know if you guys know, but you are basically the first people in the entire world outside the ladies and gentlemen about to bring out who've actually seen that footage from season two. So, very exciting day. Um, but thank you so much for coming, and let's waste no time in getting the stellar cast of Kingdom out here on stage. First up, give a big round of applause to Keely Sanchez. Next up, we have Frank Grillo. Creator and executive producer, Byron Belasco. Jonathan Tucker. Nick Jonas. And last but not least, Joanna Going. Excellent. It gets warm, I know. Um, everybody gets situated. Thank you guys so much for coming. I know you're like in the thick of filming season two, so I'm excited to talk to you about season one <laughs> to just jog some memories. Um, Byron, I'm gonna actually start with you and sort of start at the beginning here. What was sort of like the genesis point for Kingdom? Uh, okay, so this, I had been a fan of the sport for a long time, back, back, way back in the day before it was um, kind of what it is today. Back when you would have to go to Blockbuster and find it next to Faces of Death <laughs> and all that kind of shit. And you rent it and people look at you like you're a degenerate, but it was interesting. So uh, just watching that, I was just very intrigued by the people that would choose to do this for a living because it's such a strange and, you know, uh, difficult thing to do when, you know, we all kind of avoid fights and physical violence at all costs. So, so I, I said most of us, there are people that fight. <laughs> um, and um, so I kind of sat on that idea for a long time and then, you know, it was really about figuring out what the right time to write this show was because every time I'd kind of mention it, people would sort of glaze over a little bit because they had this preconceived idea of what this world would be. So I decided, well, I'm just going to write it on spec because I know what this can be, which is it's about these characters and we can, I can write a family drama that's about these people's lives and um, show people what, how these people live and what, what, their, what their lives are, which are not a, very much different than anybody's. I mean, they're a little, there's some more extremes possibly, but I mean, something drives you to fight, so that has to happen. So that was sort of the start of it and I just wrote it and... Got it going. I mean, I would imagine with any television show, it's difficult to cast. But I would imagine with Kingdom, it has to be doubly difficult because you need actors who are amazing and can also beat the crap out of each other, believably. I mean, yeah. how difficult was it to find these guys? Uh, it, it, was, uh, it was murder. I mean, it, w it was my biggest fear was how am I going to cast this before I got into the process because it's really... You know, for for the uh, the guys, you can't. It's not just about being a dude that's in shape. I mean, fighters like surfers or any other kind of athlete really have a specific way they move and what they look like, and how they carry themselves. You could sit in this room and I could pick out the fighter in two seconds. You just kind of know it. Um, and the biggest nightmare would be to make a show that 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 fighters would say, "Oh, that's bullshit," because there's been a lot of you know, kind of B-level kind of stuff, and it's the same story over and over, and none of it looks real, and none of the guys look like fighters. Um, so, not only that, but it's not like you can cast a fighter, because so much of this show is not fighting. So much of the show is, is, the, is the acting, and you really have to have the chops. So, I was uh, incredibly nervous going in, but um, obviously I nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, I think we would all agree. <laughs> Frank, when this script comes across your, de uh, your desk, is it the drama or is it the action or is it a combination of the two that intrigues you? Oh, that's a great question. It, it, was, it was the writing. I mean, it's, you know, every actor knows it's, it's, it's the writing. It's, it's, uh, you go, oh my God, I, I, I got it. You know, I, I can do this. And I did a movie a long time ago called Warrior, which is an MMA movie. And, uh, you know, my, my fear was, am I going to play a coach again? And, and, uh, I got on the, on the uh, we Skyped, we always joke about the, the Skype, and we got on the Skyped and he quickly just put me at ease about it not being that, it's not Warrior, it's something entirely different. And uh, you know, every script that we get, 
it's funny, last night I got uh, 205 and 206. It was like one o'clock in the morning I had worked and I read both scripts. And, and I think I, I emailed you at like 4 a.m. Yeah, the subject line was because I'm a lunatic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because you start reading them and it's, I, I'm as fascinated by these guys you know, I'm a fan of watching these guys work and, and uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's a gift to be able to pick up a script time and time again and there it is, you know? Tucker, what was the audition process for this show like? Because if you have, I mean, you, I think more than maybe any of the other characters has a very distinct tone to strike very quickly in that first episode. You have to know this guy is super duper unhinged but also really genuine and cares about his family and cares about the people in his life. Was it a difficult audition? Uh, well, I mean, for, you know, since we have actors here, and this isn't something we normally discuss, but to, to get a job at the beginning of pilot season was like such a thrill. <laughs> it's like, well, that's done. It's like January, and I don't have to be going through this, you know, kind of really um, unfulfilling wildly uncreative process for the next five months. You know? And then, you know, the bonus, obviously, of getting to work on a project like this with Byron and this cast and everything, it's just been, uh, it was really like a, a real dream come true. Uh, in terms of the audition process, um, you know, the vulnerability. I can tell you about your audition. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> he was the first guy, because we, I was fortunate enough to be able to read with her. Everybody, or who, 35 guys in each, and he was the first guy who came in, tattooed, he, he, he came in, he was the guy. And we watched every other audition, and every, when the last guy left, it was like, it's Tucker. Yeah. It's the guy, that was the guy. I mean, he had the guy from the very beginning. Yeah. Thank you, that's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> what was it about him that you feel like you locked into as a performer? Uh, me, yes. me? Sorry, oh, yes. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, I guess I guess it's ultimately like this very deep-seated sense of vulnerability. You know, the, somebody who is um, doing what we all do as natural human beings, but on a very um, kind of large scale. I mean, what's great about the fighting world is that it's not, it's the stakes are so high and they're so stark and they're so dramatic. And when you talk about being and working in film and television or theater, it's like it's not larger than life. It's life when it's large. Well, boy. I mean, how true is that in a, in a, I don't know how many feet, by how many feet that octagon cage is, but it's, um, you know, you make a mistake and you can end up, you know, getting your, your, your joints snapped. So uh, the idea of getting to step into that world uh, with the traits that we have normally as human beings was, was uh, very exciting. Absolutely. Uh, Nick, I'm curious, were you looking to do television when the script came your way? It was an interesting um, time in, in my life as a whole. I was, I was you know, kind of fresh out of a, a clap, uh, chapter closed, my brothers, um, and just looking basically for whatever the next step was, whether that was in, in music and, and acting, um, and, and you know, looked at my team and said, I want to find something that I can lose myself in mm -hmm. and, and work hard and, and uh, find a way to, to really dig deep and, and use a lot of you know, this crazy ride that I've been on uh, for something greater. And, and this script was one of the first that I saw. Uh, and it was not an easy process by any means. Um, you know, it took a lot, of, a lot of emails to both Byron and Frank and other members of the DirecTV team and Endemol um, just to, to show that, you know, that I was willing to, to dig in and, and work hard and, um, you know, and to just try and prove that, that this is something that I could carry, you know, and, and uh, both from a physical side of things but also mentally. And, emotionally. Um, you know, an incredible project to be a part of. Uh, learned a lot from every single one of the people up here on this stage uh, and continuing to learn and grow and, and I'm feeling just really fortunate to have a chance to be a part of it. Absolutely. Uh, Keely, there's a line in the first episode when you're talking with Frank's character where she said, you know, he's talking about, uh, did I steal you from Matt Laurier's character? And you're like, you didn't steal me. I'm not a bicycle. Like, I chose to leave him for me. And when I heard that line, I was like, this is not a stock character. This is not a throwaway woman that you see so often, I think, in male-driven shows. For you, when you see a line like that, is that something you as a performer clue into to sort of learn who your person is? Well, absolutely. And I think that that's a credit to Byron because most people don't write women having their own mind 
or being able to make their own decisions <laughs> or somehow if they're being fought over you know by men it's um, they're they're just uh, a, a tool for their storyline so um, it, you know it it spoke to me she spoke to me in that line and in a lot of others but that's that's really Byron getting it. Mm -hmm. Why, I mean, did you have to fight for the character? I mean, you know, I know it was sort of like a difficult audition process because you had to find guys who could be strong and dramatic, but on the same level, you have to find a female actor who can hold her own with those guys. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was the uh, huge challenge of this is, is you, you're having a woman who's living and thriving in a, an incredibly uh, male-dominated world, but also a world that if you prove yourself, you're you're treated as an equal, you know what I mean? In a, in a way that's, that's, I think, a little bit probably surprising to some people. I mean, there's a lot of female fighters in the world right now. But, it, but the, I, it, we had to find, I had to find an actress that had the, the sort of uh, gravitas and uh, sort of ass kick, emotional ass kicking ability to stand up to these guys and not get, not get run over and then also sort of figure out that a lot of times these fighters are, um, are, are, are like children on a certain level in the sense that they, they, need, they need love, they need to be uh, taken care of, they need to feel like somebody's got their back, that somebody's going to be the alpha for them. And I think Keeley serves that function in the gym a lot for, for a lot of people on the show. So it gives us a great anchor and it's just a great way to... It, it, the character I wanted to write was, was what, is it, what does it take for a woman who's hustling in this world to survive? And it doesn't always mean... Uh, you know, the it's it's not always the like uh, I'm solid as a rock thing. Sometimes it's you got to be a little bit of an asshole and you got to push and you got to hustle because it's a really tough world. You know, yeah. you have Keeley's character sort of in the first few episodes acting as a surrogate mother, and then you literally bring in their mother when Joanna's character comes back. Uh, Joanna, when you read the role of Christina, I mean, she is a very complicated woman from the minute you meet her. And what was it about that that appealed to you? Well, the, the first thing I read, the only thing I read to decide to go in on the project was the first episode, and I, I'm, you, I'm a blank. Um, but what really drew me in was the writing of the, the, all of the characters, but I, as I turned each page, I was particularly drawn to Jay. And I was just like, who is this crazy, crazy guy? And, and I just loved his character. When I got to the page where, oh, Oh, I'm I'm attached to him. Um, I want to go on that ride. So I didn't know what she, what was going to become of Christina. She was kind of a shadow, you know, in the initially in the uh, you know in my first introduction of the project. But also for me personally, it was kind of a coup to get cast in this part when you as this, you know, heroin junkie streetwalker. <laughs> Not a lot of people have seen me like that in my <laughs> career. So, so I was just jumping up and down with uh, getting to dig into something new. What's so interesting about Kingdom is the audience comes into a family that has a lot of history. And we don't really see that on the page necessarily, but it has to be there in the performances and in the relationships. I'm curious for the actors, what kind of work you did going into the pilot to find that familial bond and to sort of, did you talk about your histories together? Did you build that out in order? So it was not on the screen, but in each of you? I mean, I think uh, we, we probably all had a different process um, and that was incredibly important to all of us to approach it our, our own way. Um, for me, you know, I, I work with a, an acting coach that I, I was able to pull this all apart and, and kind of create my own version of this backstory. And then as the season went on, when things weren't consistent with the backstory that I'd created, uh, I'd go back and readdress it and find a way to make it all make sense. Um, you know, and in talking with Byron, it's great to, to have a, a heads up as to where things are going. Um, I have an incredibly complicated journey throughout this and, and it, it kind of stays under the surface for a long time and towards the end of the, the season we find out what that is and um, I think you know a lot of my castmates didn't even know that was happening uh, but Byron gave me a heads up uh, pretty early on um, so there, there are those things that you need to know and, and um, you know that you need as a, as, as a real sort of staple and kind of your approach but 
I'm sure everybody in this room and on the stage has a different process. And that's you know, okay. the, the way Byron writes is uh, the given circumstances in the piece usually for you are found in the dialogue from other characters. So, you know, if I, if I listen to Jay talk about his father, I get a lot of what I need about Alvi's past, and, uh, which is really great. I mean, you know, when you, when you break it down and, you, and you, you extrapolate all the given circumstances, you're like, wow. I got a lot here, like he gives you a lot of information, not necessarily with what you're saying, but, but uh, you know, s s strewn around the whole, the, around the whole script. And it, it it's continues today. I mean, I'm constantly learning about everybody. Uh, you know, it, it never gets old. So you're always, in, and sometimes I say, hey, dude, you forgot to tell me I had a mother in hospice. He's go, oh, yeah, 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 I, you do, right, right. And so sometimes, you know, it's, but for the most part, it's, you, you know, the, it was all there. It was all in the scripts, you know. It, and a lot of it is, one thing I'm really proud of with this show and this cast is that what I hear a lot is that all the characters have a very lived-in quality to them. They, they really feel like they're these people. And I think a lot of that has to do with that I don't tell these guys a whole lot about what's going on in my mind because they take so much ownership over their characters and create so much about it that I like for that to come in and surprise me because then I can write to that and then I can I can adjust and move and then when you start writing to your actors because they know the character you know as well as you do in a lot of ways I mean they're living it you know and these guys nobody on this stage right now has ever like you would never feel this sense of like oh they didn't really know where that was coming you know they all, whether it's exactly what I was thinking or not, they bring it. They bring it to the uh, to the role, and so, you know, if it's if it's going if it's if it's going some way that's going to affect the story, I might say something. Otherwise, we just roll with it because these guys own these characters, you know, and I just kind of write to that. Yeah. You know. Tucker, what about you? I mean, this is a character that I think you have to have a very firm grasp of in order for him not to delve into caricature, which he never does. I mean, he is very clearly a human being all season long. For you, what was important when you were figuring him out? Um, well, I think, you know, the, what Frank was saying about you, all of these characters in the script have something to offer your character. Um, I'm, I'm a, I like to do dream work. Um, so the coach I work with is, is a big kind of Jungian sort of dream work and being from Boston I, it was like a total uh, <laughs> dive to be like oh, I'm gonna really move to LA and become an actor and start doing dream work you know <laughs> um, but um, it's been really effective for me because you know your dreams are your subconscious it's a reflection of you and your sense of truth and your creative source and there's nothing hindering that there's nothing in the way of that it's so pure so if you can find that and listen to that it um, opens up a lot of of, of doors for you, and if you read a script in that um, same person with that same perspective, all of these characters are connected. They're all a, re a reflection of each other, and for Jay, particularly, uh, it's a reflection of Alvi. It's a reflection of what he is and what he doesn't want to be, uh, what he can be, what he could be, what he um, was. So there's there's all the and then with my mother, the same sort of things, the addictive sort of qualities that she has, um, her inability to keep a commitment. Um, there's all these sort of different elements that all these characters offer Jay. And then in turn, you've, you know, as an actor, it's like you gotta know that you're enough and that you can take your sense of truth um, and put it into this world and come up with ideas and bring them to the show and not ask permission, so to speak, but rather offer something and see if it will be able to weave into the fabric of that dream or that truth or that story or that world. And um, you know, with Jay, it's been one of the great privileges to have all of these actors be able to offer um, those sort of kind of helping hands through the whole thing. Um, Baron, I'm curious, you know, the first episode opens with Frank running and immediately getting into a fight and sort of sets a great tone for the show that really lets you know what world you're in. When you were talking to these actors about the fighting requirements, what was it that you needed them to be capable of doing on the show? I make it look real. I mean, <laughs> you know, that, which is, is it's not uh, the same as what standard, you know, stage combat classes you might take or whatever it is. So we, uh, we got hooked up with a guy named Greg Jackson, who's the top MMA coach, you know, probably in the world. It'd be like if, if Bill Belichick was your NFL advisor. Um, go and Pats, so go Pats, Greg, go Pats. Greg really opened up. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know. Cheaters. So <laughs> they, they cheat a little bit. Uh, 
but uh, <laughs> but Greg really opened up up the world for us and, and put us in touch with some local guys in LA. Um, a guy named Joe Daddy Stevenson, who's a guy on set with us every day. Uh, and all these guys went to camp. I mean, Frank had been fighting for years and in, in his whole life, but a lot of these guys were new to MMA. And so they went to camp with Joe, and he put them through a real fight camp, and they've kept up their training for a year and a half. So by the time they showed up on set, they were like, Joe was like, if these dudes wanted to fight, I could train them to, to fight, a professional fight. Um, and they're all, they're all, you know, luckily very good athletes and very dedicated and... Good for us is they're they're very competitive with each other because once you start doing that you don't want to be the you don't want to be the one like we can't really let them we can't really let them wrestle because if if they start figuring out the pecking order then my life's a nightmare <laughs> so so anyway th so these guys just they just went for it and uh, so yeah that was great you know Frank how important do you think having that foundation is to your process to your character to bringing the realism to that role. Uh, extremely important because as the coach, as the guy who kind of predated the UFC, uh, you know, this is a guy who has to know everything, mm -hmm. everything, um, and who kind of missed out, you know, was born a little too early to, to, to be part of it. And so I grew up, I was, I wrestled in high school and college and I did jujitsu and I boxed. And so it, to me, it was like falling off a log. It's what I do. I don't golf. I box every day. You know, I go in the gym at 5 a.m. every day and box, and then I come to work and, and box. <laughs> so, you know, and, and so, the, you know, Byron said something earlier that was important, and, you know, we talked about it early on in the, in the process. Like, there's a, there's a way fighters stand. There's a way fighters hold their hands. There's a way fighters move their shoulders. There's a way, you know, if, you, if he's talking to me, you know, you don't pick your hand. It's, it's the, those nuances are what makes it authentic. Joe Daddy Stevenson, who was a world champion MMA fighter, we do scenes sometimes, and this guy cries. He actually cries. Like, he'll run up and he'll go, he'll shake, and he'll go, that's my life. Like, do you, you, that, it's, and I'm like, all right, dude, all right, just gonna <laughs> take it easy, take it easy. And so you know, you know we're dialed in when those guys, when the judicious yeah. say, you're doing it right, you know? Yeah. Keely, if they sort of have reference points in the real world for the fighting, did, what kind of work did you do to build her? Did you talk to women who live in this world? Did you just talk to anyone? Who experienced it, or did you sort of create her from a place of just authenticity in the script? Um, probably the latter first, but my, I grew up around the racetrack. My dad was a jockey, and it's a very similar world to a fighter. It's, um, you're cutting weight, they're, uh, you're around degenerates, and... <laughs> <laughs> People that put themselves in harm's way every time, you know, they get in the hor on a horse in the ring. And um, so it, it just felt, I didn't feel like I had to talk to women who were in this world because I, I grew up in one very similar with an athlete. So um, that was already there. It was more, you know, I had just worked with Frank um, right before we started shooting this. On the Purge too. Who's a degenerate? Purge, Purge too. you should see it, it's on video. Um, and uh, and I, I mean, we became really good friends, and so this just, I didn't have to imagine what this relationship was going to look like. Um, and I think that with some of the other guys, like with Matt, I didn't know him at all, and we're shooting a scene where he comes back from prison and it was awkward and clunky and weird and I don't know our history, we didn't talk and, and actually using all of that was what made the scene, like because it is awkward and clunky and, and so it's, sometimes you're just given those gifts um, and you think that they're disadvantages or uh, you didn't do your homework or, or you missed something and if you're able to, to change the perspective a little bit, you can use it. And um, that, that is, it's so special, I think, those moments. Absolutely. For a show that's about fighting on one level, you do an amazing job of not only showcasing fighting, but allowing it to play out. I mean, there are episodes where there are like 10 to 15 minute fights that just do not end. And I'm curious, Nick, for you, I mean, you have the honor of the first big fight in the show. In the first episode, you have a very lengthy fight scene. First of all, if you have a 10 minute fight on screen, how long does that take to film? 
Uh, that took all day. Uh, that was a full day of, of, of shooting that. Um, we did the the weight cut scene uh, earlier in the day, or, or the, the you know the um, weigh in. I mean, then we shot the rest of it. And what I found in it was that it was an incredibly emotional thing to shoot uh, on all levels, because um, you know specifically for the show, it was the first big fight, and it kind of had to set the tone for what that was going to look and feel like. So there was that side of it and that pressure, but also uh, we have a lot of real fighters as a part of the show. Mm -hmm. So the, the team Navy Street that you see at the end of the fight, um, you know, as, as Frank mentioned before, they were all crying and emotional and, and uh, this was a win for them just as much as it was for us. Um, and for the character, you know, this was an incredibly important moment. Um, anytime he can feel worthy in his father's eyes is, is something for him. And, um, so yeah, it was it was an all day thing, and, and I got to work with one of the, the best fighters in the world right now, Cub Swanson, uh, who was incredibly gracious. Uh, because although we did a lot of training and, and still do, um, we're not professional fighters, <laughs> and it's a very dangerous environment. And you know, and you have to be patient. And uh, Tucker, Tucker took an elbow to the face from a pro fighter. I, I was lucky and didn't have that, but I was certainly sore the next day. Well, tell him the rest. So Tucker's eye opened up. Yeah, opened up, gash. Tucker said, get me crazy glue. And he crazy glued his eye together. And, and he finished the work. You, know, you do all this homework. You want to like, you know, you don't want to get pulled out of the game, coach. Yeah. Like, you, know, you gotta be kidding me. I mean, like, ultimately, like, that's what's so, you know, we do so much homework on this show. And then we come to work. And, you know, we're really blessed. I mean, a few, you know, a few of these guys are here from DirecTV, Chris Long. And, I mean, the, and, and them all. And these guys are very conf they're very confident in, their, in themselves. And this is one of the privileges you don't get on a lot of shows. Or, it's like these guys are so confident in, the, in themselves in, in, a, in a good way that they allow us to, to then do um, the things that we have done the homework to do. Um, and so we come to set and we just kind of have fun. And if, for somebody who would come on to visit, it looks like we're kind of you know, fooling around the whole time, but we all have done so much work to get there. And so then we're completely open to the vibrations of the set and each other. And that makes for a really dynamic and also really like kind of liberating, exciting experience to have. I, I think it translates in terms of the truthfulness of the show. For sure. I mean, actors will always talk about on this stage quite often the endurance it takes to film an hour-long series, and they're not having all-day fight scenes, and they're not busting their eyes open and putting them back together with crazy glue. I mean, what have you guys learned about the endurance it takes to actually make this show? I don't have it. <laughs> I mean, these guys, these guys have to work really hard because we, we do something called crossboarding. That means we shoot up two episodes at a time. So you could, you'll be shooting a scene from one episode right next to a scene from another episode. Um, and we kind of shoot in a very fast, raw, mostly handheld, composed, but mostly handheld way. Uh, but what it does for us is I think it, it makes us work fast and instinctual. So you don't, you don't, you don't get in your head too much, you know what I mean? And so, and I think that energy sort of gets captured on the screen, but I know it's incredibly grueling for everybody, everybody to shoot that quickly, and then, you know, just the training too, to stay, you know, believe it or not, like they have to eat right to look like this, um, which is The only is time boring. we get frustrated, it's like when we're called on set and we're there for like a few hours, which normally is fine, but it's like, guys, I like, I would have had a gym schedule, I would have been boxing, I would have like, and as soon as I wrap here, it's nine o'clock, I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna have a coffee, and I'm gonna drag my ass to the gym and like get a real workout in and then go home home, go to bed and get ready for a set. So it's like, it's the, 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 the fullness actually of the experience while, while as grueling as it is, and it is really challenging, it does also end up becoming kind of this all in all the time, this kind of unreasonable commitment as Matt Loria calls it. Yeah. It's really great. It's it is. And doing two scripts, you know, you, you, have to, you have to break down these scripts as if it's one script. And so you have to track the character's physical, emotional, psychological, spiritual journey from the first page of, you know, one script to the last page of it. So, you know, you come in and you're doing the last scene from the second episode, and then right next to that, you're doing the second scene from the first episode. So you have to go, like you said, you go home at night, you train, then you gotta open your work up, and you gotta make sure that you know exactly where you are yeah. all the time. That's what is exhausting. That is really exhausting. Joanna, I'm curious for you, I mean, if we're talking about sort of these two episodes at a time, you went through a wild character shift over the season. You went from being, you know, high on drugs to detoxing to recover to 
TBD in the finale. Um, I mean, for you, what was important in those moments of keeping the character's truth as you were so out of order and everything was lumped up together? Well, it was really important to me to try to be as authentic as possible in her situation and, um, you know, physically, always to find out where, you know, where is she, is, is, did she just shoot up? Did she, did, is she like on that level or is she, is it coming down and she needs to be that level and it would change the way she would behave, it would be change her physicality and how she would react to people um, when she really needed it, um, you know, um, the, the actual detox happened behind closed doors, which I, I, was, I was really glad for that choice because it's something we have seen a lot, you know, but, um, but it was brutal going in and, and, um, and I was so glad to go there with Tucker. Well, Joanna, I mean, your, your, your physical, you know, training in some respect, I mean, she's right there on the diet train with us and that's, well, that's yeah. no fun. Only I don't do the workout <laughs> half of it. I just do the, the unhealthy eating half, <laughs> half of it, um, you know, trying to look like someone who's, who's uh, you know, been living like this for quite some time and, you know, kind of physically ravaged. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, that's a challenge as, as an actor to, you know, be able to walk around and think straight, but still want to, you know, appear to be, you know, um, malnourished and unwell. Um, and, you know, just like, like Frank said, just keeping, you know, keeping track of it, bouncing back and forth. And we have a great uh, you know, crew and support team, you know, who are always right there with everything you need, especially a lot of it, a lot of it will happen right in the moment too, because you, we, we don't spend a lot of time in hanging out. We didn't, you know, I, I, I didn't meet Tucker until the first day we did a table read and then I didn't see him until we were doing a scene. And you really have to be in the moment, look around at where you are, what can I take from this place right now and what am I getting from this person right now? We're gonna, we're gonna dive in and make a relationship right here and now. So there is a lot of that, you know, just breathing and being, being present. Well, I'm curious in regards to that with you and Frank, because I mean, you basically had no scenes together until like episode six or seven when he just shows up and you're in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And that's a situation where there is so much history there and there is a marriage and a clearly a terrible split that, you know. Uh, can you talk a little bit about sort of finding that with one another and developing the relationship between your two characters? Well, again, going back to what Byron does so beautifully is give you the information through the other characters mm -hmm. about our relationship. And so then you, you kind of take it in, you know, it's like a Lego, so you just kind of build and build and build. And by the time we're together, there's a whole life that you've experienced basically through the eyes of these other people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you do your homework and, and uh, you know, everybody's had bad relationships. I certainly have had a couple. <laughs> and and you, kind of, you kind of run with it, you know? But uh, it, it, for us, it was, I think, I think it really, it, it felt, it felt tumultuous from the beginning. It felt, you know, but, but still, there was love, there was something there. There was always this thing there that we couldn't separate from each other. And we, we kind of had that right away. Yeah, I think so. Also, because we came into that like halfway through the season, so you know, we each had been in our own separate worlds, shooting there, but never crossing paths. So this idea that you know, it really just kind of act worked out well that we didn't really see much of each other until that scene on the set. That was the first one that we did um, together when, when we have that meeting in the, in the house that Jay sort of <laughs> orchestrates. Um, so it was just movie magic, I think. <laughs> you know? And there was, you know, the same is a little bit true with Ke Keely, your character, and Joanna, your character as well, because truly until the end of the season, you don't come together. And there's that great moment when you're, I think you're watching a match and you just basically say, you're living everything that I did and you're doing it better than I am. I mean, I would love to just talk a little bit about sort of like the female energy that gets injected into this show through the two of your characters. I mean, for you, the journeys that both of these two women were on were extreme, I mean, where they started in episode one and where they end in episode 10 for both of them is so different. I mean, she's in a, seemingly stable relationship is then not by the end sort of reversed <laughs> with you i mean what did you guys enjoy about the trajectories you got to execute as these first 10 episodes unspooled 
Um, well, I, I really enjoyed, you know, sort of the wayward mother, um, you know, definitely just a broken, broken person, but who, who has this idea of what she should have been and getting this chance to come back and, and, and try to fix it and how she kind of dives into like, I'm gonna be the happy homemaker here now and try to make it all better. Um, and then, you, you know, m while her mind is getting clearer and her body is getting cleaner and cleaner and, and then kind of being faced with the whole real reality of, of uh, life has gone on without her and, and here, you know, here's Alvi with another woman who's so powerful and strong and everything that Christina couldn't be um, and, and that her sons are as devoted to this woman as 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 he is, and um, just you know, seeing the the inside out image there. Absolutely. What about you? Uh, yeah, I I think that you know when you first see Lisa in the beginning, she kind of has created this life where. Of course, she wants something more, something bigger for the gym, for the fighters, for you know her and Alvi, for the family. Um, and she has this determination and ambition and drive towards that that dream and goal. Um, and but things are great, kinda. And then her past sort of comes into her life and complicates everything. And um, her journey to where she feels like she's losing not only the person that she loves but this family that she has given all of herself to um, this family and also the family of the gym and feeling like his past coming back in and being able to maybe take everything from her and that realization of, wait a minute, I was right there, I could see it, and now how am I on the outside of this, <laughs> this family? So I thought it was really interesting that Byron didn't write anything for Lisa and Christina before the very end. It was the last episode, correct? Yeah. And so when they do have that moment, it's wrought with, at least it was for me, and you, what you're saying as well is that with, with envy and, and, and a jealousy and a, and a fight for, for the love of these men. Absolutely. Uh, we all just, saw, they all just saw the finale before this panel, which sets up a lot of interesting things for season two. Uh, Nick, it sort of confirms a plot point about your character that had been teased all season long. What excites you about now that, that the audience is in on that secret, the potential of what you get to do as an actor with that character? I think it's an incredibly important storyline. Um, in the same way that, you know, we, we approach you know, the authenticity of our fighting in the show. I think we have to approach real human issues and, and feelings and emotions. Um, so with this storyline, uh, when I first heard about it, um, I was thrilled at the opportunity to, to go there and, and to, to go on the journey wherever it led, you know, with, with um, a really open heart and understanding of, of what this person, talking about Nate, my character, what he's going through and uh, how to tell the story honestly. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the season, we leave it in a place that, that gives us an indication, the first real indication, I think. And, and um, you know, as we've started season two, it's, it's been uh, really interesting to sort of pull the onion apart piece by piece. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think, I think the great thing is, is hearing from people that have watched the show and uh, people who have uh, found a lot of comfort in this. And, and um, you know, anytime you can create something where you, you help people feel like they're not alone mm -hmm. uh, in whatever they're going through in their life, um, it's a beautiful thing. And so I'm, I'm honored to get to tell this story. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Tucker, you had talked about sort of, yes, the, uh, the intensity required to the physical, I mean, you said you started prepping in March. The show didn't start shooting until a couple of, like a month or two ago. How important is it to you to have 
that foundation to work from? Are you kind of actor who needs to immerse himself? Like, could you do this if you didn't, as you were saying before, go shoot all day, go to the gym at nine o'clock after work, come in the next day at six a.m.? Like, do you feel like it would work? Uh, well, I mean, look, you, you know, when you go into an audition, you try to do as much as you possibly can with the limited time you have and the limited opportunities that are being provided for you in the room. And when you get that job, if it's a, you know, one day guest star, you bust your ass and you do as much as you possibly can in that one day and the two takes they might give you and whatever it might be, right? So with, with, with something like this, uh, you, you do the same thing. I mean, you, you give it everything you possibly have. What's wonderful is when it gives it back to you. Um, you know, when you're, when you get those scripts at one in the morning and you can't stop reading them, uh, and it, you know, you know they're going to be sitting there in your inbox in the next morning, but you have to read them because you're a fan of the show and you're dying to see where these characters are going. Um, I mean, the physicality, you can pretend like you're a math genius, you can act like that because the dialogue is it to you, but you can't walk in with Cub Swanson, at that point, the second um, ranked featherweight UFC champion of the entire world, and take off your shirt and be like, yeah. I can fight you unless you actually look like you can fight him, you know? <laughs> so there's just certain truths that are non-negotiable, and this is one of those truths that's non-negotiable. Um, and it's great because it's a great opportunity to, to, to play ball in the major leagues here. Absolutely. Um, speaking of non-negotiable truths, congratulations, Keely. Um, obviously... <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> there's obviously wonderful news. Thank you, thank you. And as we saw, and this is real, it plays into the second season. I'm curious, as a performer, have you found playing a pregnant woman whilst being pregnant has <laughs> given you like a different approach to the performance in any way? Uh, yes. Um, how I feel about my pregnancy and how Lisa feels about her pregnancy are very different. Um, my relationship with my husband and my relationship <laughs> or Lisa's with Alvi is very different. Um, so it is, uh, uh, it's, it's trippy because there is someone growing inside your body <laughs> that you're kind of also communicating with. Um, and I really think I'm going to fuck him up. <laughs> because... <laughs> I'm like, you know, playing Lisa and not myself and and it's it's weird. Like he's not gonna know who his daddy he's is. Going, is that guy my father? <laughs> or is that guy my father? <laughs> Word that is scary. <laughs> uh, so you have to go home and be like Mommy loves daddy, it's yeah. fine, <laughs> everything's okay. I want you, I promise. <laughs> yeah, you know, things like that. Yeah. Totally yeah. normal parenting Normal things. actor things you go through. Absolutely. Frank, you spent 10 episodes now establishing this world in season one. When you came back for season two, what excited you about the potential that you now had where sort of all the cards were on the table and it was about what you got to do with them? Well... well you know, I, I keep going back to Byron. It's uh, it's it's the world that he creates. You know, it's there's the word cliche does not exist uh, in this guy's vocabulary. And so normally on a TV series, it would end and kind of pick up right where it left off and stuff. You know, we're we we've moved on in time, and and uh, some of the stuff that may have seemed important towards the end of season one kind of gets, you know, put on the back burner. And and uh, so what excited me about it is that, like in real life. Um, these people have moved on and they're kind of, there's other objectives that they have and other obstacles that they're dealing with mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, our relationships have, have altered somewhat, some better, some, some for the worse and so it's just exciting to come back and know that it's fresh. You're not coming back, you know, not to knock it, but it's not like you're doing some, I'm holding a script going, well, and you did so you say that the man was murdered at 7.30 at night. You know, it's kind of like, it's different all the time. And so for an actor on television, that's a gift. Absolutely. That really is a gift. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, we took uh, some questions from the audience. We're going to end with one. And it's sort of for all of the actors. Um, and I'm, Joanne, I'm going to put you on the spot, and then we'll just go right down the row. Uh, can you explain how you got your SAG card? Do you... <laughs> um, I, I, was, I was already after, um, and I was, because I was working on soaps, which were my, my first professional job out of school, 
Yeah. <laughs> Soap actors forever. In fact, like, you know, I, for much of my life, I was like, oh, I can always go back to the soaps, and the <laughs> soaps are kind of going away on me. Um, but um, I, so I think after that, I think, I believe it was a commercial. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a, a SAG commercial for um, Cherry Coke, I think. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Nick? <laughs> uh, I started doing theater when I was a kid. Um, and fell in love with that and did that for a long time. Then I started doing a couple commercials. And my first like big claim to fame for all my friends was I did a really great Chuck E. Cheese commercial. <laughs> yes, you did. I did. You act like you've yeah. seen it, Frank. I have it on a loop in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Tucker, what about you? Uh, my, it's funny because my mother is right here in the back. So Aww. she uh, you know, was one of those wonderful, supportive um, parents who allowed their kids to follow their passion and kind of was dragged by the hand, she was dragged by the hand by, by me going, come on. Uh, 1993 was my second commercial because I was Taft Hartley, which I realized at the age of 11 was like, well, that means it's a $1,200 savings. I don't have to join just yet, you know? <laughs> so then when the second commercial came around, I was like, all right, I got a pony up. And it was there in the Boston office in 1993. Yeah, man. <laughs> Did you know they were gonna ask that? No. I just remember. <laughs> 1993 was a wonderful album that came out. So I, re I was really pleased with that. Frank, what about you? <laughs> Mentos. <laughs> the Fresh Me? Yes, Mentos. And Nick, is that a commercial that plays in a loop in your house? <laughs> the day I was born, I've been watching that movie. <laughs> Keely, what about you? My story is so boring. Um, I got out here and started auditioning and then got a pilot and then they paid for my side card. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best way. It should have. That's right. Well, guys, thank you all so much for being thank here you. with us thank tonight. You thank you, guys. Thank, thank you guys for coming out. And uh, don't forget to watch Kingdom Season 2 on DirecTV. <laughs>